Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a Grixis, what I'd like to call Titan Shift deck. We're playing with Lazav, the Multifarious, a shapeshifter that's gonna try and shapeshift into Croxa, Titan of Death's Hunger. So we've got our shapeshifter and we've got our Titan, hence a Titan Shift. So unlike the modern equivalent, we don't have any primeval titans or scapeshifts in this deck. So we're also a self-mill deck that is going to be trying to fill our own graveyard to set up these various graveyard synergies with Call of the Death Dweller as a 3-mana reanimation spell to get back two creatures from the graveyard, including the newly printed Archfiend's Vessel from M21 that if we get it back from the graveyard turns into a 5-5 demon, so that's another powerful way of closing out the game besides our titan. And then we're also a Lurus Companion deck, so we can only play with permanents with convert mana cost 2 or less in our deck. And then we get access to the 3 mana 3 2 Cat Nightmare with Lifelink, that during each of our turns lets us cast one permanent spell with converted mana cost 2 or less from our graveyard. So that's another way of getting back the vessel from the graveyard and turning it into a 5 5 demon. So let's take a look at the entire deck list, starting out with our one drops where we've got the full playset of Merfolk Secret Keeper, which can help us fill the graveyard with the Venture Deeper Adventure, milling the top four cards, and then afterwards we can still play a one mana 04, which is useful as sacrifice fodder for our Priest of Forgotten Gods. Then we've got our Archfiend's Vessel, which we want to get in the graveyard as soon as possible to then reanimate and turn into a 5 5 demon. We've got two copies of Gutter Bones as additional sacrifice fodder that we might randomly mill and then can get back from the graveyard. Great alongside our Priest of Forgotten Gods as a creature we can keep getting back and keep sacrificing. And then Stitcher Supplier, which is the only non-land card in the main deck that's uh, actually not standard legal, but a very important piece of the puzzle here as a 1 mana 1 1 zombie that when it enters the battlefield or dies, mills three cards, so will help us fill the graveyard nicely. And then at 2 mana we've got the full playset of Narcomoeba as just a random 1-1 one -one flyer that we might get for free if we happen to mill it from our library into our graveyard. We've got 4 copies of Mire Triton as a 2 mana 2-1 two death touch that when it enters the battlefield it gains 2 life and mills 2 cards, so more graveyard filling. And then the full playset of Priest of Forgotten Gods, which is the only real removal spell we have in the deck. 2 mana 1-2 that we can tap and then sacrifice 2 other creatures, and then the opponent has to sack a creature, lose 2 life, and we also get to draw a card and add 2 black mana, which is then useful to maybe cast the Call of the Death Dweller after we've sacrificed the Archfiend's Vessel. And then we get to the fun part of the deck, which is Lazav the Multifarious plus Croxa. Lazav a 2 mana 1 3 that when it enters the battlefield helps us surveil 1, so can put more stuff in the graveyard once again. And then for X, we can turn Lazav into a copy of a creature that's in our graveyard with convert mana cost X, except it's still Lazav the Multifarious, and it's legendary in addition to its other types, and has this ability. So if we turn Lazav into Croxa, it's only gonna cost us 2 mana to do so if we have a Croxa in the graveyard, and then all of a sudden we have a 6-6 six, six Titan that when it attacks makes the opponent discard a card and then each opponent who didn't discard a non-land card this way loses 3 life. So that beats down very hard and also disrupts the opponent's hand so makes it very difficult for a lot of decks to deal with. And of course it's pretty easy to get Croxa in our graveyard if we have it in our hand since we can just play it and it will end up there naturally. And then we can also escape Croxa later for 4 mana exiling 5 other cards from our graveyard to get access to the 6-6 six, six Elder Giant as well. And a cool thing about Lazar and Croxa is that Lazav still keeps his own name, so if we turn Lazav into Croxa, we can still have another Croxa alongside it, so we can potentially have two of the Elder Giants in play, making the opponent discard two cards per turn. And then Call of the Death Dweller is the only non-permanent card in the deck, a 3 mana sorcery that returns up to two target creature cards with total converted mana cost 3 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield, and then we can put a death touch counter on either one of them and a menace counter on either one of them as well. So this is great to get back our Archfiend's vessels, but can also just help us reanimate various other creatures from the graveyard that we might want. And then in the more grindy matchups we can pay 3 mana to put Lurs in our hand and get access to the powerful recursion that Lurs provides as well. And Lurs another creature we can get back with Call of the Death Dweller to keep the graveyard engine going. And then the mana base, we're playing 22 lands, including two basic swamps, all the shock lands in the Grixis colors, so for Water Grave, for Steam Vents, and for Blood Crypt. And then the other addition that Historic brings is better mana, as we get access to some of these check lands with four Drowned Catacomb and four Dragon Skull Summit. So that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. 
Alright, we're on the play. This hand is pretty bad. We've got two Narcomoebas in hand, which is not where we want them. And not a ton of uh, payoffs here. This is better. Seeker Keeper hopefully mills a copy of Croxa. Or maybe a Vessel to reanimate with Call of the Death Dweller. And then probably don't need Steam Vents here. Alright, there's Archfiend's Vessel and Priests, so two great targets for Call of the Death Dweller to get back. And another Secret Keeper I'll be happy to draw, I think. So, turn three. Call. And then we'll put all the counters on the priests since... Ooh, Spell Pierce. That's unfortunate. Well, that does slow us down quite a bit here. Sir point on a teamer deck of some sorts. Kill fiends, okay. Well, let's keep milling. Find double Narcomoeba. Not bad. I could have also just played two Secret Keepers, turn Lazav into a uh, Priest and then get rid of the Kiln Fiend that way. But Narcomoeba is some nice sacrifice fodder too. So let's do that instead. Play a Secret Keeper. Turn Lazav into a Priest. Sacking a an Narcomoeba and a Secret Keeper. And hope to draw something we can cast with the two black mana that's left. Alright, Vessel works. Alternatively, I could have just sacked both Narcomoebas instead of a Secret Keeper and then paid three mana to put Lurse in my hands. And yeah, opponent scoops it up. They might have a deck that's fully built to leverage kill fiends, but they don't have a great way to deal with the priest here. And uh, that's just going to keep killing their one creature over and over again. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Probably lead with Stitcher Supplier here. Hit Narcomoeba and a Croxa, nice. So, if we find Lazav, we're in business. This turn I want to play Priests. Opponent on Gruul. With a Burning Tree Emissary start, let's see if they have more Burning Trees, at least two. And a stomp to kill the priest, yep. Alright, that's a setback. So, now what? Play Mar Triton, I guess, see what we mill. Next turn we can probably escape Croxa already. I'm just gonna stay back, I think. Happy to trade for the burning trees. Bodon sends all. I'm happy to just trade for their small creatures. That way, it's more difficult for them to put an Ember Cleave in play. And we'll just uh, put more stuff in the graveyard, escape a Croxa. And the Gruul deck is not great at killing a 6 6 creature. So I need red mana. XL the non-relevant cards here. Mar Triton, Narcomoeba, Stitcher Supplier. And our opponent did keep a two lander with those double burning tree emissaries, but hasn't drawn a land since. And scoops it up, so the 
feared Gruul deck with a bit of a stumble here on two lanes. Can't really handle a Croxile that well. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand's a little sketchy with only one land, but we are on the draw, and if we find a second land, it's actually quite good with double priests, especially against the Numori deck, which might be an all creature deck. I'll try it. On the play, this would definitely be a mulligan, though. Hit double Narcomiva. Feels like we hit the jackpot. Can't sell Freebooter, so this might be a Mardu human stack, or maybe a four color human stack. Freebooter can't take anything. Call of the Death Dweller, the only target in our deck. And let's see how they handle a turn two priest. The additional mana that the priest generates definitely quite useful here, with all these black cards in hand. So knowing that our opponent is playing Omori as their companion, they can't have too much removal, maybe a Bone Crusher Giant. Although they seem like maybe a human tribal deck instead. There's some blue mana for Kudro, so at least four colors. Although the ability on Kudro to exile our graveyard is actually quite relevant. Well, we'll just try and get more priests in play. Attack first with Narcomibas before we sacrifice them. So maybe I don't want to mill more cards this turn. So we'll hold off to uh, Sacrifice Supplier until next turn when we can maybe get rid of Kudro. Sag the Narcomy boss. And then play Priests. I could just put Lurse into my hand, maybe. Yeah, sure. I could play the Gutter Bones, but I don't really want to play Triton or Supplier here. And then next turn we can double activate Priest. Hopefully they can't play too many more creatures. Another Freebooter. Gets rid of Narcomiba. And a Fervent Champion, so we're not quite gonna get to kill Kudro next turn, sadly. So I'll just take five. Start with a Supplier. And there's a Vessel, so I can play Lurus getting back a Vessel too if I want to. And our opponent just scoops it up. Yeah, our uh, Graveyard synergies are pretty strong here. Lurus getting back Vessel, we've got Croxa that we're pretty close to escaping to with all these cards hitting the Graveyard. And in the meantime we've got Double Priest getting rid of all their creatures. So an all-creature deck is gonna really struggle to deal with Priest of Forgotten Gods. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. Two ways to mill ourselves and then a Call of the Death Dweller to maybe get some stuff back. Facing turn one Pelt Collector out of a Stomping Ground, so probably the Gruul deck. Let us just uh, play Supplier maybe. And there's a Vessel that we can reanimate on turn three, making a 5-5 five, five Flyer. I guess I'll wait with chumping with the supplier until next turn can maybe prevent a bit more damage. Alright, so let's mill with the Secret Keeper. And mill again. 
could also play an 0 for a blocker here, which is reasonable. Next turn I can get back Lazav and Vessel, and then Lazav turns into Kroxa, so my next turn is kind of planned already, so I don't need to mill more cards. Seems fine. I'm pretty happy if they finish off my Secret Keeper here with a Giant, because then they might not have it for another more important creature like a Priest. Alright, so let's get Vessel and Lazav, I believe. Put all the counters on Lazav, since Vessel is gonna turn into a Demon. And then don't really need my Triton. So let's see how they deal with the demon here. Maybe an Ember Cleave can get past it. So this probably implies another Stomp from Bone Crusher Giants, but I'm happy enough making that trade. Next turn we get a Croxa. So, all right, looks like we're gonna get our Elder Giant here, gets the opponent's last card too, and then we still have two mana left over, which is enough for Secret Keeper, Mill and Play. And then next turn I can just escape a regular Croxa as well. So they seem pretty dead here. I can just play two Croxas and that's six more damage. Or I can just escape this one. All right, sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a pretty nice opening hand. Could maybe use a few more cards to fill the graveyard, but Lanzav also surveils. And then we're hoping to hit Kroxa, we're hoping to hit Archfiend's Vessel for Call of the Death Dweller. Up against Tempered Steel, all right. So facing a, an aggressive deck, there's Vessel, but we'll just play Lazav this turn, I think. If I get really lucky, I could mill a Croxa and already be attacking with a 6-6 six -six next turn. Or I can play Triton to maybe help set up Call of the Death Dweller a bit better. Alright, let's go for a Triton then. Happy trading for the Constructs. Alright, we mill the priests. Steel Overseer, that's the scary card we need to try and get rid of. We drew the Croxa. So this turn I could go Lazav plus Vassal. And then next turn if I draw a land I can play Croxa and turn Lazav into a Croxa, which would be pretty strong. Alternatively I can just call the Death Dweller to get access to priests. But our opponent's going to have a lot of random creatures to sacrifice. So I think I like the Lazav line here. And then I can use the Surveil to maybe find the land for next turn. Secret Keeper isn't bad. But I think I would rather draw land here. 
and Vassal I'm very happy to chum block with. So do we see the signature enchantment here? Yep, there is the tempered steel. Construct stays back. Did not draw the land, sadly. So let's attack with the vessel and the Triton. Lazav could turn into a priest as well. So if the Triton trades for the Construct, great, then I can turn Lazav into a Priest and then I can get closer to killing their Steel Overseer. If they kill the Vessel, then I can call the Death Dweller to turn Vessel into a Demon. Turn Lazav into a Priest anyway. And then I can sacrifice Vessel and get it back that way. And then what do I sacrifice? Probably gutter bones instead of uh, Triton here. And then next turn I can set up my uh, Croxa Lazaf play perhaps. Get back Vessel and Priests. And then with two Priests in play, it's gonna be much easier to get rid of their Steel Overseer. Alright, not a bad turn. Opponent is also at 9 in the meantime. So they can't feel too comfortable. Opponent just passes. Alright, where do I begin? Probably Croxa, make him discard. And then I can use my Priest if I go into full control to sacrifice Croxa before it gets a sacrifice to its own ability. So we'll use uh, this is Lazav, so we want to use the actual priests. Sacrifice these two. And they still have to discard. And then what do I want to do next? I kind of want to just activate Lazav as Priest instead of turning it into a Croxa here. So let's play Narcomiba. Get back Gutter Bones and play it. And then if they sag the Ornithopter they die to the Demon, so they have to sag the Steel Overseer. And yeah, opponent sees it riding on the wall. They're gonna basically lose their entire board. Well, that was quite a beating. Priest doing a number on the Tempered Steel deck as well here. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. We're a bit light on South Mill, only have the Mire Triton and the Surveil from Lazav. But if we can hit something like a uh, Croxa, we're in great shape. Facing the Mono Red's Aggro deck here. Probably still play Gutter Bones, although I could also just play Shockland Tapped here. Save myself a bit of damage. Maybe we'll try that. Aha, it's a Blue Red Wizard deck instead. So Wizard's Lightning, definitely among the cards that they're gonna have. So the chances of Priest surviving are pretty slim. 
could send out a distraction Narcomiba to hold off the Storm Tamer, but it's not the most impactful play. I think we'll just play Mar Triton here, which I'm happy to trade for the Lava Runner and maybe sets up our graveyard for the future turns. And if it dies, it's fine too. Mills loss I have and Vessel. Alright, Vessel definitely an exciting one. So the Triton gets shocked. Is it time to play Priests? I think so. Could also play Lazav if we think they have another shock, because at three toughness it doesn't die to it. And then Lazav could also turn into a priest at some point, but we'll try this approach. So priest gets shocked. Alright, time for Lazav, I guess. Mystical Dispute, wow, I was not expecting that one. Fair enough. So I guess next turn we can maybe put our lures in hand and then start using that. Not our Lazav also works. Can pay for mystical disputes. Get a free Narcomiba. And then Lazav. Next turn probably turns into a priest. Fine attacking with one gutter bones. And we might finally see Lurus in action. Haven't had a chance to play Lurus yet, all our games have ended too quickly. Opponent passes. Nah, I think it's Priest time. And then I could consider attacking first with the Narcomiba here to get in my one damage. I guess I should. Play Vessel and then I can sag Vessel and Narcomiba. And then I could play Lurus and then um, get back Vessel, it seems decent. Three, although I can't play for a Mystical Dispute if they have one, so maybe I should wait until next turn. I mean, if they counter Lurus, I can still turn Lazav into Lurus and start getting stuff back. So maybe it's okay if that happens. Yep, there's a dispute. Well, if they kill my Lazaf now, that's pretty bad. But uh, hopefully that doesn't happen. Could keep up two mana to turn Lazaf into a normal Lazaf again, so it has one more toughness in case of a shock. I think I just play Narcomiba. Maybe I could have gotten more aggressive with the gutter bones in hindsight. Alright, opponent doesn't seem to have an answer for Lazav. And yeah, Lazav next turn can first be used as a priest, sacrificing Gutter Bones and Narcomiba, and then I can still turn Lazav into a Lurus, and then Lurus can get back a vessel from the graveyard. So you can kind of see how all these graveyard synergies are coming together here. On to the next one. 
All right, we're on the play. This hand's pretty bad. We're missing any graveyard enablers, so the Call of the Death Dweller's not going to do much. This is okay. We've got Lazav plus Kroxa, double priests. So, Kroxa is not necessarily bad in multiple, since that's the way we get to attack the opponent's hand even more. Priest is lacking a bit of sacrifice fodder in this hand. But maybe I just get rid of one Kroxa anyway. And then keep double priests, which some decks struggle to deal with. Stomping ground into Lanner Elves, so might be yet another Gruul deck here. Right, let's make him deal with the Priest, I think. Or I could go for like the Turbo Croxa here. Although, it's not going to be happening next turn. Unless I uh, surveil into another Croxa, as I'll need for mana to play Lazav and turn it into Croxa, so... And then I can maybe end up using the Priests when we play Croxa to have an additional creature to sacrifice. And it's also likely to bait out some removal. So I think we Priest again. And then if I draw land next turn, I could go Croxa plus Triton activate Priests. All right, land is great. So I think we stick to the plan here. Might even mill a copy of uh, Narcomoeba here. No Narcomoebas. Got to go full control for this to work. Sadly, don't get to make use of our two mana here. But yeah, we're very close to just escaping Croxa 2 here without needing Lazav. So I could do that right now. Let's see, what are my options? So I can make a 6-6 a six, six Titan here. Could also play Lazav, turn Lazav into a Croxa right away. And then next turn, escape Croxa, so I have two of them. I don't get the Croxa triggers this turn from the escape, but they have three cards in hand anyway, so I don't think it matters. So I kind of like the Lazav play more here. Another Priest seems like a potentially fine draw. So we'll keep it on top. Lazav turns into Croxa. Play the tapped. Is this a double Domri's ambush? No, just ambush attack. Alright, I guess I need to take seven. Or I could trade and just escape Croxa. I mean, maybe that's fine. Because I can't really be attacking with Lazav next turn if I'm going to be at 5 here, I don't think. Although, getting rid of a potential questing beast in their hand would be nice. Maybe I'm supposed to take it. I'm definitely comfortable playing a longer game with Lurus still at our disposal. And Embercleave does get worse if we manage to trade off for their creatures. But I also kind of like destroying their hand. Eh, I'll take it. And then we'll attack. Escape a Croxa. And play a Priest.
And yeah, opponent plays a Spellbreaker and realizes that they're in trouble and scoops it up. Sweet, so seeing Lazav and Croxine play at the same time, just like we drew it up. Alright, so I've got to say I'm pretty impressed by the deck's performance today. We managed to beat multiple Gruul decks, which is considered to be one of the more powerful decks in the historic format. And uh, it didn't even seem close some of the time. We got to see some of the recursion synergies, so we can easily play a longer game should we get matched against a control deck. And against a deck like Field of the Dead, we have access to the 5-5 demons to fly over a horde of zombies to kill the opponent. Croxa also can deal damage to the opponent directly and can ignore zombies for the most part. So the deck seems to have a pretty decent game plan against a lot of the popular decks in the format. The deck seems fully capable of winning quickly with an early Call of the Death Dweller making a 5-5 demon, or with a Lazav turning into a Croxa or simply escaping a Croxa on turn 4, which is pretty trivial. And then we can also outgrind the opponent with a late game that Lurse provides, getting stuff back from the graveyard over and over. Lazav can turn into a Lurse if they deal with it, so we can uh, still keep getting stuff back, or a Call of the Death Dweller can get back Lurse. So we've got all these recursion engines that if they don't exile Lurse, we can just keep getting it back. And then, uh, yeah, we can apply pressure against the control and combo decks, and we can play a nice controlling game against the aggressive decks. So if we can do both, then we've got ourselves a pretty good deck, I think. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.